but you retort. The mistake he made was corrected. It happened accidentally, when he wasn't thinking. Well, that can certainly be the answer to the problem. If you're the kind of person who believes that Thomas Jefferson would be the kind of man to make a spelling mistake on a much previewed declaration, and then have to ask his mates for an eraser to scrub out his poor choice of words. If you are that kind of person, the person to fall for such an obviously ridiculous cover story, then I can certainly recommend a great vacation package next time you're in the mood for an exciting holiday. Of course, now that the controversy has hit the headlines, the media laughs it off as a mistake. But let's pause again for a moment and think about the reports that have come across the ubiquitous media oracles. What is going on here, we might ask. We must open our eyes and ears and get the subtextual significance of what has happened. The news about the Declaration's strange wording is coming to the world now at this important point. Coincidentally, exactly at the same time that America took birth, the month of July. For ritualistic purposes, that is what you must get your mind around. We are meant to know that this word subjects is there. As Ralph Epperson rightly states in his video entitled America's Secret Destiny, we are meant to know that we have made ourselves into willing slaves or serfs and that we have voluntarily divested ourselves of our rights. This travesty occurred because, as I have pointed out elsewhere, documents such as the Declaration and Constitution make use of talismanic words. These documents are talismanic documents designed to enthrall us so that we voluntarily offer ourselves as subjects of the crown. This is precisely what Americans have been duped into doing. We've not been forced into slavery, but wooed into it. We've accepted salt for sugar, merely because they look alike. Is it any wonder the cuisine tastes rotten? Moreover, the so-called mistake did not happen because old Uncle Tommy lost his concentration while peering out the window at some passing bit of skirt. No, he wrote one word in, purposely erased it, and then deliberately overwrote it with the new deceptive word. It was an exercise in ritualistic duplicity. But we may ask, why did he do such a bizarre thing? Why go to this kind of trouble? Well, it's the same kind of trouble that his masters and predecessors have gone to throughout the ages. In this one incident, we get to see the whole game. Because we're meant to see the man and the straw man behind it. We're meant to see and know what's going on in the world. The wars, conquests, rivalries, famines, upheavals, outbreaks of disease, ecocide, mass paranoia, and so on. We are meant to see it, and then we're meant to edit out the parts we don't care to see that cause us pain or which threaten our overall ideas about reality. Legally speaking and ritually speaking, the controllers play games with our minds. They know that we're under their control. They want us to know it too. And they also know when to conceal their power and tone down their machinations. They know how to enthrall and mesmerize us with talismanic words and phrases, with promises of this and that kind of utopia. They know how to dazzle and beguile us, and how to keep us exactly where they want us in their great hierarchical Bastille. The two antithetical words were blended together on purpose. So do not believe the simplistic, if plausible, explanations offered by the media slime with their insider smiles. They're just playing you for fools. 
old Tommy had one too many that night and forgot the difference between the words subjects and citizens. Yeah, that's right. Same as David Rockefeller is a great philanthropist and Barack Obama is the best president we ever had. And the justice system is really there to protect our rights. And Martin Luther King, the Pope, and the Dalai Lama are really spiritual men. Sure thing. Sure, Jefferson scratched out and overwrote the word subjects. But the fact is that he meant it to be there to begin with. And the media now want you to know it was there to begin with as well. Hint, hint. I find it highly significant that the revelations concerning the Declaration have been broadcast by the media during the weeks after July 4th and after the so-called dog days sacred to the Freemasons. As I said, it would take us too long to explore the significance of the dog days and the star series in this presentation, and I've dealt with the subject in greater depth in my Atlantis book and Origins and Oracles DVD series. At this time, I can only remind the listeners that the oligarchs who drafted the Constitution and Declaration were members of the Solar Cult. More specifically, they were Atonists. Every major political or social event they have planned corresponds with significant astrological and astronomical occurrences. Fortunately, in the present age of awakening, these facts have begun at last to come into the public attention. The Atonists or Luciferians, as some researchers prefer to call them, were for the most part high-level Masons and Knights Templar, and as we've said, many of them were directly connected to powerful British and European dynasties. And it's no different today. Go and read our article entitled Weapons of Mass Destruction Found, and you'll see quotations from leading figures in the American political arena showing how they defer and toady to the British royals doing whatever they may to acquire their disgusting favor and preposterous awards. In my Constitution Con article, I went on to show that many royal lieutenants belong to shadowy Jewish cabals, although we must emphasize that in our opinion, the conspiracy of which we speak and which we personally expose throughout our works is not a purely Jewish one, at least not in the accepted sense. This is because the word Jew has been put before us fraudulently. It does not refer to a religious sect as we've been led to believe. Rather, it refers to the Judites or Gaionim, the princes of light, who manipulate the events we see on the world stage. They also create and maintenance the various faux rivalries that occur between Jews, Muslims and Christians Protestants and Catholics, Democrats and Republicans, and so on. I've often explained that the Queen of England can be a Judite, even though she is the head of the Protestant religion, while the Pope can also be one, even though he is officially the head of the Catholic religion. This is because they know what the masses of mankind are never meant to know. They know what the words, terms, and titles actually mean. We only know what we think they mean. And we can be sure that there is little to no connection between the two levels of understanding. 